So smooth, so smooth, it must be Tuesday, and it is, which means it's time for a tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be taking at how to mint an NFT directly from the contract. And we're gonna be doing it looking at the project which has got everybody talking because all it is is words, yes, talking about loot. We will get into all of that directly after this message from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Polymarket, the world's leading information markets platform where you can trade on the most pressing global questions all on the blockchain. Choose from a variety of markets. Will Cardano support smart contracts by October? Hmm. Will the US have more than 200,000 COVID cases before 2022? Will Trump run for president again? And with over $140 million traded on the platform, Polymarket is the go-to place to settle the biggest debates of the day. Want tomorrow's news today? Use Polymarket to see real-time data and what the market thinks will happen. No fake news, no pundits without skin in the game. Think you know more than the market? Trade on your beliefs and earn a return, if you are right. And for a limited time, sign up with the referral code TUTORIALS to get up to $100 reimbursed on your first day of trading. Go to the description and click on the link to get started, polymarket.co forward slash tutorials. So if you've been minting PFPs, avatars, in the last couple of months, you will probably come across something where you try to mint it from a website and the website kind of crashes and goes a bit slow and then you go in Discord and there's always one guy or girl saying, yeah, I minted directly from the contract, so yeah, got like 10 year, got like 20 year. How did they do it? How do these people circumvent the system? Well, you see, there's two things going on here. There is a website. Now, websites are designed to handle X amount of traffic and the people who set them up believe that the amount of traffic that goes through will be sufficient. But then when Mint Day comes, you can have 30, 40, 50,000 people piling into a website and it just goes, they can't handle it. That's one layer. Second layer is underneath all of that, there is a smart contract. That smart contract is performing functions and it is taking inputs from users via the website. So you have a snazzy user interface which says, uh, put in this number and, uh, and there's a mint button. And what that's doing is it's invoking the smart contract underneath it. But you can go around the back and go directly to the smart contract. And the best thing is you don't need a lot of technical savvy to be able to do that. Let's dig in. So the reason I've been doing this is not because I wanted to jump into uh, NFT sales and, and get around the corner on a you know in a, in a gas war. It's actually because of loot. So this is what the genesis of this whole thing. This is the uh, original tweet from Dom, co-founder, co-creator, well creator of Vine, Blitmaps. But it, it all starts here. So he issued this tweet which said, "Loot, randomized adventure gear, no images or stats, intentionally omitted for others to interpret, no features, gas." But fundamentally down here, he says, "Available via contract only." not audited, mint at your own risk. No website, this is just a bunch of text and some images. <clears throat> and to access it, you had to go directly to the contract. Uh -huh. So this is already a bar for most people that wouldn't be able to get over. I remember talking to Snowfro about CryptoPunks. He was telling me how <clears throat> there was no MetaMask back then. You just had to go and uh, connect up your, your node and perform a transaction directly with the contract and it was quite difficult. But once you got past that, then you got these things for free. Now, this is kind of similar to that. So there was an OpenSea address, which was the collection of loot, but there was also this contract. Now, all of these loot tokens have been claimed, but even if you clicked on it, all it would do was take you to the contract. <clears throat> so what we can see here is we can see the loot token itself. We open that in a new tab we will see that there's a max total supply of 7,779 loot. That's it. <clears throat> That's all there will ever be. But what we can do is we can go to the contract, which has a green tick next to it. And here we can see the code. And this code, <clears throat> as we now know, and as we should know, can be copied and forked and re reproduced ad infinitum. But more importantly, we can also write it. So in here, we have a number of different uh, fields that we can fill in that can basically allow you to claim the token. Now, what would happen here is you connect to Web3 and you connect to MetaMask. <clears throat> and then in here, what you would do is you type in a token ID and you'd have to guess a token ID and hope that you would find one that hadn't been claimed. And once you did that, you would then be able to write the contract 
and you would be issued the token in response. So if I try now to, let's say, token ID, so I want to claim token number 500 <clears throat> right now, what will happen is MetaMask will pop up with an obscene gas fee. And that obscene gas fee tells you that this token has already been claimed. <clears throat> now, when not all the tokens have been claimed, then um, this will still pop up sometimes if you're trying to claim one that has already been claimed. But if not, then you'll get a normal gas fee and you'll be able to claim it and it's yours. And it says here, transaction error exception thrown in contract code. And that is because <clears throat> all the loot tokens have already been claimed. I have a frog in my throat. So that's the loot contract and there is no website. But if we look at noobs, for instance, well, there is a website and we could mint noobs directly from that web UI. And that's absolutely fine. We would never need to interact with the contract. But what if we wanted to? Well, I happen to have some noobs in my account. We can click on the noob. And I can go down to where it was sent to me. Click on this, which will take me to Etherscan. And then I'll be able to find the contract itself. So here it is. Here's the noobs token. I click on that. And it will take me through to the same kind of page that we saw with loot. And now if we look on the contract, <clears throat> I have the option to mint directly from the contract. And that is how, when you're dealing with gas wars, people go straight to this page, they do their homework, they ask in Discord, what is the contract address for the token in question? And then they just mint directly from the contract and they don't worry about all of that traffic piling through the website. So we're gonna go ahead and actually do one of these right now. So if we have a look at Loot for Adventurers, here it is. If you don't know what this project is, it's one of the wildest things I have ever seen in crypto. I don't even know where this thing is going to go. All I know is that I'm, I'm along for the journey and we're making a film about it this week. So we will try and explain a little bit more about what's going on. But from the outside, it will literally look like the weirdest thing ever. Black squares, white text. What is going on here? And why is the floor 10.48 ETH? Last Friday, it was 19 ETH and more. We'll get into all of that. What this is, is a, it's a contract that is incredibly easy to fork. And as a result, people have done so. And they've created derivatives in order to build out the extended universe of this project. You can go in the Lou Discord and go and find in the NFT announcements channel a whole bunch of these. Now, what we're going to do now is mint one because we can. So here we are. We're going to look at the spells for adventurers. There are... Oh, so many of these things. And uh, I have minted a bunch and I regret some of the ones I've minted because they're obviously garbage, but some of them are not garbage. And generally you can scroll through and look for the positive looking emojis on the Discord to see whether any of them are actually good. For instance, here we have Lego blocks for loot derivatives, a basic building block for forging loot. It includes a set of seven raw materials that can be used to forge loot based on the materials included. No responses there, nobody cares. <clears throat> but here's the most important thing, it's free to claim if you use mint with loot. So if you, own, if you own one of those original Genesis loot tokens, you can mint one of these for free. And here's how we're going to do it. So the one we're gonna do is Spells for Adventurers. You will see there's a contract address, there's also an OpenSea account. Um, we go to the OpenSea account, we will see a bunch of black squares with white text on them. Yes, I know, it makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. Uh, I'm just along for the journey, trying to figure it out and, um, <clears throat> and having some fun along the way. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go to the contract address, which is here. First thing we're gonna do is go to, oh, they're actually pinged us through directly to uh, the contract itself. So what I'm gonna do is just check how many of these have been minted. 140 so far out of 37 holders. So they're not that popular. Uh, let's see, how many are they planning on issuing of these? 8,000, so enough to cover all loot holders. So now we, we need to first connect to Web3, use MetaMask, that's good. So now we can interact with the contract directly. And then we can click on claim for loot. And I believe that my loot token ID is 5023. And then I can click right and now I'll be able to claim it. And you can see the gas is, wow, what's gas looking like today? Well, it's not terrible. That's $127 to claim this thing. So they're free, free, but I still have to pay the gas, uh, which 
it's become so hypernormalized that we just think, or I think that this is just fine. It's not fine, is it? $127 for a black square with some text on it. You do have to stop sometimes and just take a look around and think, what is going on? <clears throat> so if I reject that now, and I click on claim instead, we could claim, uh, let's see what the information says on the thing here. Tokens 8,002 to 10,000 free to loot for loot for everyone else, use function claim. Uh, well, we would basically be able to claim the token that way. But what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and claim it off my own loot token. So you see how you put your token ID in here, it gives me the option, oh look, I can pay more gas now. Well, listen, it's a tutorial. Let's just go ahead and do it. So that will then set up a transaction and I don't know how congested Ethereum is today, but it has been fairly congested. So we'll let that go through. We'll come back and see what it looks like on OpenSea and see how it all works. But that's literally how you mint from a contract. It's, it's that simple. Of course, the user experience is basic, deliberately. But as you can see, you don't need to input any code. You just need to understand what the fields are. And they're not that difficult to get your head around. Um, if we were minting from the noobs contact, for instance, uh, if we were just to have a look at that. Let's go in there again and look at the new, we'll be able to see that there's actually a token price that we can put in if we want to mint. Uh, buy multiple noobs, should be in here. So yeah, so we would have the payable amount. So you'd have to go on the noobs website and see the payable amount is 0 0.04 ETH. And then if we wanted to mint 20, we'd put 20 in here and then you're off to the races and you can mint directly from the contract. It's that simple. So let's let that go ahead and go through. Yeah, that's a success. So hopefully now, what we, which one we have is Spell for Adventurers. So now if I went to my OpenSea account. So here we go, best place to look, the activity tab. And here I can see I have a spell. I have a free spell and I've also got something else. What is this? Tomb Ether Prophecy Tomb of Kalula? Well, there you go. I have no idea what any of this is. I have so many Discord channels I am in that I, my brain cannot cope anymore. I have no idea where this is going to spin out to, but <clears throat> hopefully someone manages to make sense of it all. They manage to unite all the clans, all the different projects, all the different contracts into one big, vaguely easy to understand Lutiverse. What I do know is that this thing is being built out in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. And there are some big people piling into it because they believe that there is something somewhere in the middle of all this that has value. I'm very curious where it's gonna go. But anyway, that's hopefully a nice little look at how to mint directly from the contract. There is so much that you can learn from Etherscan. It should be, it should be a website that you spend more and more time on as you go further into your blockchain journey. But if you really want to get deep into the weeds, best place to start, Etherscan. There you go. So that was our first tutorial from the new look setup. We're still tidying it up a little bit, but this is definitely a better desk position for me, for tutorials, for everything else. I get to look directly into the camera. Isn't that nice? Uh, we are on our way to 100,000 subscribers. If you liked this, drop us a like. If you want to see more of it, subscribe. There's a little bell there. Hit that too. You'll get notified whenever a new video drops. And who doesn't want more of this? This guy. Uh, you know what to do. Help us out here. We are going to do something big for 100,000 subscribers. We want to get there before the end of the year. And I think we can. We will have NFTs galore to give you when that happens. But for now, see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>